we are in the strangest days of the church. Some fellow went in for a job, and as he sat down at the interview panel, they said, hey, we have hired you. You are already employed. Join us on the panel. He, he went in for an interview for a job. They hired him right there and asked him to join them on the panel. He became a boss right there. We are in the strange days of the church. And all we need is to be able to pick on this frequency. Working with God. Working with God. Working with God. We are, we are serving a faithful God. Our God is no fake. We're serving a faithful God. His presence will always make the difference. His voice will always put you on top of life situations. God is real and God is here. 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 Whatever he says, that is what he will do. God is not a joker. He means what he says and he says what he means. Whatever he says to you, that is exactly what he does. Tonight I pray that whatever thing might be stopping your access to the voice of God be broken down forever. As you pick his word, may his voice continue to thunder from the page of scriptures to you. And as you see that, you find things working. Every day of my life, God has directed my steps and I've seen the difference. It's effortless. It's struggle-free. You can be free from all struggles. It's effortless. It's struggle-free. We built our second university all out of the blessings of God, out of his house. Blessings of God. You have said so you don't have no, enough room to take them. Out of reserves, no noise, no nothing. You just find the buildings rising. A whole campus of 1,400 acres of property, all road networks, water, power, everything in place, staff housing, everybody together. It, it, it's humbling. And that's when God speaks. You can be sure what happens next. When God speaks, you can be sure of what happens next. My prayer tonight is this if it's working in Nigeria, if it's working in Africa, it will work anywhere it is. It will work anywhere it is. It will work anywhere. If it's working out there, it will work anywhere it is. If I were you, therefore, Lord, show me what you have shown that man. If you want to get the kind of result he's getting, just God, show me what you have shown that man. And then he shows it to you. He speaks to you. And then you are up on the same frequency. I knew that wherever Brother Copeland was going, I was going there. I knew that. 1982, I encountered him and I knew that. I knew I was going to wherever I was going. Today in Lagos, we have our own hunger at the airport. <laughs> Built, debt free, struggle free, strategically located. Strategically located. All by the blessings of God. Today we have close to about 30 secondary schools across the nation. Most of them are boarding schools and about 90 primary schools spread across the nation. All by the blessings of God. I can tell you this, just one word from God will bring this tie in you out. Now the Bible said the Lord sent a word into Jacob and it lighted upon Israel. We are not asking you to give so the church can be blessed. We are asking you to give so you can be blessed. Yes. The church is a blessed body. He said, the glory of this little house shall be greater than the former. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, said the Lord. You are not given as a sponsor. You are given as a privilege, covenant child. You are too small to sponsor the kingdom. You are too small to sponsor the kingdom. Because God's project is according to God's size. You can't measure up. You are too small to be a kingdom sponsor. No. Don't ever mistake yourself as a sponsor. Our mission has no sponsor. The silver is mine and the gold is mine. See the Lord. But we get blessed along as he carries out his project on the earth. 
by committing ourselves to it. I knew giving was the way up and I committed myself to it by covenant. And bless God, I'm not down. I'm up. Yes. Yes. Some fellow said, okay, I was worth $150 million. I said, that's an insult. $150 million, that's an insult. I'm worth Philippians 4, 19. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. 150 million too small. That can't be. That can't be. He said, You shall lay up gold as dust. Is that 150 million? No. And check it out. Please check it out as I close. Check it out. Now, giving does not automatically result into prosperity. <laughs> you have to be spiritual for your giving to command the tongues. You have to be spiritual. Now, hear what he says. He said, receive, I pray thee the law from his mouth. And lay up his words in your heart. If you return to the Almighty, you'll be built up. Then you shall put iniquity far from your tabernacle. Then shall you lay up gold as dust. Job 22, verse 21 to 26. Then shall ye lay up gold as dust. So, God is not interested in your donations. It is four people that need donations. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. God does not need no donation from you. Your giving is a spiritual transaction, not a donation. And when it's acceptable, the returns become obvious. It's so important. We need to be spiritual. Church is not a bank. Where anything you bring is, is acceptable. You must give it correctly before it's acceptable. Yes. There are many givers who are frustrated. Why? They are giving off spiritual frequency. They are giving off spiritual frequency. Yes. He said, you shall take iniquity far from you. You can't be cheating on your company and say you are giving. You can't be in drug business, destroying destinies, and say you are giving. These are all things. People need to know it. He said, it will purify us. Then will our sacrifices be acceptable unto God. Malachi chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. So we need to have a spiritual root to assess our inheritance. Hear what Paul said. He said, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you inheritance among them which are sanctified. So you don't have inheritance without a commitment to sanctification. Come on now. You don't have no inheritance. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. You have no inheritance except you are committed to sanctification as a lifestyle. Striving to please God in the spirit. Walking in love. Not robbing people. Then you are up running. We need to wake up to this. Can I tell you this? God is going to prosper the end time church in a most dangerous way. I know that. I know God will prosper. We are, we are in the golden age of the church. Hear what he said. He said, who among you saw the glory of this house in its first estate? How do you see it now? Is, is it not as compared to nothing? But I tell you, the glory of this little house shall be greater than the former. The silver is mine. And the gold is mine, said the Lord. Haggai chapter 2, verse 3 to 9. And then in Malachi chapter 3, he said, In that day when I make up my joys, they shall be mine. So there is a day of kingdom economy. There is a day of divine economy. Malachi chapter 3, verse 17. Now, you see, we are in that day when God's treasures will be unleashed on the earth. To those who are truly serving God, then shall you return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between them that serve God and them that serve him not. Malachi chapter 3 verse 17 and 18. So it's time for us to clean up. I say it's time to clean up. I say it's time to clean up. It's time to clean up so that our sacrifices can be acceptable to God. It's time to clean up. 
so that our tithes and offerings can ascend to God as a sweet smelling servo. Yes. It's time to clean up. Yes. God receives my offerings and it shows in my life. God accepts my sacrifices and it shows in my life. The truth is this, I have never had to pray for food. I've never had to pray for payment of bills. I've never had to. When it's acceptable, it's acceptable. My prayer is this, that beginning from now, your offerings, your sacrifices shall be acceptable to God. My God said, if you do what I'm asking you to do, you will lay up gold as dust. And the gold of offer as the stones of the brooks. He said, Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense, and thou shalt have what? Plenty of silver. Plenty. We are in the days of strange plenty. Strange plenty. We are in the days of strange plenty. By the grace of God, we're starting up our third university very shortly. Activity is about to kick, kick up. Because we want to remain the light of the world. We want to be part of putting smiles on the face of people. They need it. And if he sent us to offer it, let's go ahead and do it. And it's never failed once. Some strange things will happen by your hands. Between now and the next year convention. Individuals here, companies here, corporations here. God is going to visit you with very strange favor. Very strange favor. Just stay committed to God. Stay committed to the demands of the kingdom. Get excited. Yes. You're running an individual race. Get excited about it. And very shortly, it will be clear those who are serving God and those who are not serving Him. This is your hour. This is your hour. This is your hour. God is busy decorating the church right now. God is beautifying the church right now. And you will never be left behind. You will never be left behind. You will never be left behind. Come and give the Lord a big hand of praise. Shall we all rise to our...